day it is. Guess what day it is. Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is. Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo -woo! Ronnie, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? On Wednesday. Hump day! Get happy. Yeah! Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Take two. Take two! Take two. It worked! Oh my gosh! Yeah, this so why, I don't know what happened there. This is why we're, we're dentists. Yeah. yeah that's dentists exactly and technology, why. they don't really merge together. I don't know anybody in this group that lectures on technology, so... <laughs> that's what I'm all about. Well, fortunately, we have someone who's talking on, on my level tonight. We're going to talk copper bands amalgam buildups, all that really latest technology kind of stuff. So some green yeah. stick compound, yeah. Yeah. throw that in there. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, not yeah. gonna happen. This Honestly, is gonna be great. We have a phenomenal show tonight, and we actually have a rock star who is uh, talking about way more than than what I just brought up. So let me welcome all of you uh, to take two of Dennis in the Know. Uh, apparently, we were broadcasting to the wrong group, so uh, so <laughs> so nachos. We apologize. <laughs> and yeah, we didn't, yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't do that. Um, but anyway, welcome to, to Hump Day Happy Hour with Dennis in the Know. This is your backstage look at current trends, politics, and education in the dental world. It's all live, and it's over a cocktail. And my co-hosts are those guys, Dr. Chad Duplantis and Dr. Jennifer Bell. We call her JB. You should call her JB too. All of us are practicing dentists, catapult educators, and business owners. Our job is to bring you in the know. So let's do it, guys. How was your week? Fantastic. Next. How was yours? Yeah. Jennifer, why don't you go next? <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah, bring it down that quick. The rainbows and butterflies that were shooting out of Texas this week. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, everything's good in Texas the, this Apparently. week. Apparently, so, yeah, yeah. Not it's South Carolina, down North Carolina. Not yeah, it's a, so much, it's a real yeah. bunch of crap down here. So inspire us, Chad. You know, it was a really good week. Um, a couple of great things happened, but I'm going to tell you a story today that <laughs> happened that was really cool. So I have a patient and this starts off bad, but it ends good. And um, a couple of years ago, she ended up with, uh, with carcinoma of the sinus and unfortunately she passed and she was young. She had a young family and, um, and, and we've been continuing to see her husband and her kids and her husband came in today. And as he was leaving, he, uh, he asked to speak to me again and I was already back in the lab working on some stuff. And so I came out and, and he said, Chad, he said, uh, I, I, I've never said this, but I just want to thank you for the way that you and your team have handled our family since his wife passed. And, uh, I, I was just totally blown away. And I said, well, I, you know, we just do what we do. And, and he says, no, he says, but it's true that you all care about people. And, and he said some other things. And to me, I don't care if I was having the crappiest week in the world, that meant the world to me because mm -hmm. people realize that we do actually care about people. And, um, and that kind of stuff doesn't happen every day. It, does, it hasn't happened in, in 20 plus years, but it was really cool. And this guy, if you'd met him, if you've ever met him, you'd know that he's not the type of person that says that. So that meant that much more. So you know, that's why today was a great day. It was a great day because people recognize how we recognize our patients and care about our patients. So it was cool. Well, my week is better vicariously through you because of that story. So thank you for, I, I appreciate you sharing that because I needed a little uplifting news this week. Um, it, it's been a rough one. I'm not going to lie. I mean, that's what we do. We tell the truth on this show, right? right. You know, it's not always perfect. It's not always a fairy oh, tale. No. It's a great profession, 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm down two people at my front desk in my main office. I'm down one person at the front desk in my satellite. And I have an assistant whose husband tested positive for COVID. So she's out for the week. And, you know, we're doing what we do. We're just making it work. And it's just not always a fairy tale when we have to do that. So um, you guys know it. Uh, just one of those weeks for good old Hefe. Well, I was prepping number 15 crown, which was already super fun when I found that distal decay. And then something really beautiful and miraculous happened. The lights went out. <laughs> Are you in Georgia? What? Oh, no. Stop it. It's no, so I know what you had going with this. This is the music. No, no, no. <laughs> no, the power ring. Next time you come in with a reference like that, you got to sing it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> the day that the lights went out and Joel. Oh, see. I, now I've just changed I'm my mind. Don't sing it. <laughs> Was your patient now no more band? singing from Chad ever again on dates. Yeah. Stamp of approval. Sorry, JB. Keep talking. Uh, no, there really is not much more to say except try to figure out how you're going to finish the rest of that appointment without any power. So how long was the power out? An hour. The power was out for an hour. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Did you go take a shower? No. I'm rhyming. Come on. It's an onomatopoeia. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Chad, that is absolutely the longest like word that I've ever heard you say, and you probably that. still don't know what it means. <laughs> I, I don't, and it probably wasn't right. It was probably a limerick. <laughs> Or a, a haiku? Or uh, it was a haiku, right? It might have been, um, it might have been a limerick. Um, it, but I like, I've always wanted to use onomatopoeia in a sentence. Yeah, yeah. Well, you it's just did. That way. And I, I have no idea what the hell it means. I know we had to learn it in like fourth grade, but I have no idea what it means. But JB, you just threw out an onomatopoeia. I know. I feel like he's rubbing his good week in our face. Like, I have an afternoon, like, oh, we want to a pizza or a haiku. And I'm like, well, it sucked. I don't know what it was or what prose or what poetry or any of that, but it sucked and we figured it out. Or is it just irony? Hey, here's the deal. Thank you. I told you all a great story. And you know what? For every good, there's bad in dentistry. I know. I know. The way that our job goes. But you know what? I leave and I remember the good. And that's that's all that mattered about today. There's days that I leave and all I remember is the bad. But today I remember the good. So, so you know, I'm, you have it. I'm good. And I'm have sorry it. the lights went out in Georgia. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope you were working on an innocent man. And I hope right. that you will be able to tell us what's good in the world of dental news this week. So I also have to say something to you, Chad, because at the end of the day, what we do is we all play within ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We we all just try to, to make the best of a bad day because I know how much you love all of these things because I saw you put that on a post in our Facebook group, you were a little irritated at at some of the phrases that that we all mm. like. To use. Oh, yeah. game changer! Game changer! Yes, game changer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're normal. Okay. I yeah. thought that post was a home run. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? <laughs> Tonight is going to be a game changer. All right. So let me tell everybody about the show, and then. We'll, uh, we'll move along because I'm sure everybody's sick of you and me, Chad, and they're ready to hear Jennifer. So um, we, we absolutely have another blockbuster tonight, guys. And, and I'm so proud, um, you know, to, uh, of what we've done and, and you know, some of, the, some of the people that are really wanting to uh, be on our show and, and be with us and have real discussion about dentistry. And uh, tonight's one of those blockbusters. So leading researcher, educator, and materials guru, Dr. Nate Lawson is sharing all of his insights on bioactivity with us. And of course, JB is going to give you all of the news as she always does. Um, but first, I want to try something new, guys. And, and I know I'm just throwing this at you tonight. So 
I'm lobbing a softball up, but I think we need to always do this, is first of all, cheers to all of you. There it is. Cheers. I want to say cheers. I want all of you out there to lift your glass and think about some of the great things about being a dentist, being a dental hygienist assistant, being affiliated with a dental office, your job, anything that makes you happy. And I'm going to make each one of us say something that we would like to cheers to tonight, positive about our practice, because I was a Debbie Downer tonight, and I can't let it go on like that. All right, Chad, you first. I guess in our pregame, I missed that because I was going to cheers to what I said earlier. But you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say cheers to finding the positive in every negative and having a great day despite how crappy it really was. I love it. Jennifer? I will cheers to my team at my office because it has been really, no, let me be specific. It's been very difficult these last six months. We've had more turnover than we had expected. We've had maternity leaves. We, we have a lot of new people and some of our staff that's been with us for a bit are digging in their heels and loving on us and loving us through this and it's stressful for them. And our new people are picking up their bootstraps and trying to dive in and be really good performers. And so, you know, it, it just, it, it continues to validate the love that uh, people who go into dentistry have for others and, and the commitment that they make. Um, and I think we do get cynical because we come across enough people that don't feel that way. Uh, but then when you start to see that glimmer of hope of a few individuals who are joining the team who are coming in and you see that they're loving on patients and they're trying to do their absolute best every day, I cheers to them. And I, and I know that they're, they, that this is all tough for us and it's tough for business owners and we're carrying our own burden. But those new team members and the guys that are joining us every day, cheers to you. Cheers. Can I, can I come work for you? <laughs> Yeah, no. No, I probably find you in about a week. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. So honestly, yeah. Jennifer, no, I, I, thank you. That was that was beautiful. But um, I'm actually going to go down the same path as you because you know I started out today talking about how difficult it's been being so many people down at the office, but the other side of that is the incredible mm -hmm. team that I've surrounded myself with. And, you know, again, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it, you know, it's a process of finding all those right people. But I can tell you that, that I found a lot of the right people over all these years because, man, these people have rallied. Everyone is taking turns at the front desk this week. So everybody's working extra hours. I'm seeing some skills from assistants, from hygienists coming in and, and taking over the receptionist role. And, and um, it's just been amazing. So I want to cheers my team as well, uh, because they have been rock stars through all this. Cheers. Absolutely. So, all right, good. So doesn't that feel good? Yes. Oh, yeah, it feels good. It feels okay. real good, Jeff. All right, let's have a group hug now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jennifer, give us some news. Everybody wants to hear it. They're tired of chatting. Well, I got to be honest, guys. Can I get real again? I feel like tonight is a bit more like a jam sesh. But anyway, the new segment's really slow right now. And I think it has everything to do with next Tuesday. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of activity, obviously, out of the what, legislative branch. Um, my son's... 12th birthday. That's what it is. Oh, and the makes, whole world sense. stops. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, also the election. Oh, God. oh, so there's that too. Almost forgot. Yeah. Anywho, um, I think that has actually put kind of a standstill on a lot of things. There's not a lot of activity happening on uh, the legislative branch. Obviously there's very little, if anything, really going on there. 
Uh, CDC and OSHA seem to be in a little bit of a lull as well as far as like regulations for COVID is concerned. A little activity on the vaccine side, which we talked a little bit about last week. We have a great guest, little teaser coming up. We'll talk a lot more about vaccines then. Um, so I just think in general, we're, we're in a bit of a, a quiet period. So I wanted to have a little bit more of an interesting conversation about a piece of uh, news I found this week from the New York University Dental School. Are you guys hearing that echo or is it just me? I, I am hearing that echo, JB, but carry on. My way. Yeah, it's not terrible. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, there, will, there will be peace when you're done. I don't know where it's coming from. Carry anyway. on, wayward son. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, anywho, I can do this uh, all night. University <laughs> posted a, a study this week on aggression in the dental workplace, and I thought that was a fascinating study that no one's really dived into on how dentists are treated in their work environment. And so they came out and basically they did narrow in the last 12 months with COVID to really look at if COVID had increased the level of aggression. But then they also looked at these dentists over their career to also look at aggression. And, and I would say, I actually thought aggression would be higher during COVID. It was statistically a little bit less over the last 12 months. Um, and all, all a large majority, more than 75% of the dentists that were surveyed in this uh, study experienced some form of aggression. And we're talking physical, kicking, pushing, that type of thing in the workplace, up to uh, online assaults and reviews and, and things that we're probably a lot more familiar with. Um, so I thought it was an interesting look at our workplace and probably a little bit of a microscope into why sometimes our days are extremely hard. And in light of some of the conversations we've had tonight, in fact, I had talked to several of my friends this week who had received negative online reviews and a couple of patients who have been responding more aggressively lately. And it does seem like I think the window of COVID acceptability may be starting to pass. We can't quite blame it on COVID anymore, or patients aren't going to at least accept COVID as an excuse anymore, even though it may still legitimately be an excuse. Exactly. Um, and the level of tolerance is going to start going down, and the level of aggression is going to start going up. So I didn't know if you guys had any thoughts on what the study meant or... How you're no, I, I, I think we all see that, right? I think, you know, everybody has lost a little patience. I think people are tired of being at home. I think the fact that every dental office that, that or every dental practice owner that I know has said that they've been as busy as they've ever been. Why? Yeah. People are just trying to get out. They're trying to have some sense of, of normalcy, right? But yeah. Even with that, they can't come to the dentist and have a normal experience. They're going to have to come in, answer questions, have their temperature taken, wait in the parking lot. So nothing is really the same. And I think people are just general. I'm frustrated, right? I'm used to getting on an airplane like three times a month. And I haven't been on an airplane since March. And so everybody's routines are just turned completely upside down at this point. And, and, you know, in, in our psyches, how, you know, how do we handle that? How do we handle that kind of change or, or, you know, that kind of departure from what is so ingrained in us? Um, I think it's difficult. You know, we've had patients too, that we've had uh, lab cases that have taken extra time because of shipping. We've had, I've been waiting for dental lights for eight months. No, I mean, it's not a problem with the supplier. It's not a problem with the manufacturer. It's just, it's just where we are, yeah. and it, and it is due to COVID. So you know, I think a lot of people are are frustrated in different ways, and and yeah, we've seen it in our practice too. Chad, have you? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, you know, it's getting real. When I ordered the new iPhone last week, and it's going to be delivered in a month, you want to talk about pissed off. I expected it the next day. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's getting real, man. I mean, you know, but in all seriousness, things, things, their tensions. You ever, are you ever heard the term first world problems? Yeah. <laughs> tensions are high right now everywhere uh things have slowed down um everybody's in a little bit of a different place and yes you're right we are busy i feel busy every single day but you can sense the frustrations in our patients not necessarily with us but with society right now so and um, i feel like it's <clears throat> two extremes one is people are more gracious than they've ever been. You 100%. Know, thank you so much for being open. Yeah. Thank you for being here. How are you doing? How are you handling all this? 100%, and people yeah. are asking that, which before I don't know that they ever would really have asked me much about how I'm doing. So you've got that piece of the coin and then you've got the opposite side of the level of frustration. And it's at COVID, it's at normalcy, it's at, Uh, The fact that they can't, that maybe they've lost jobs, maybe economically we're in a different situation, Um, you know, and so you've got all, and maybe they're homeschooling kids, which preach, I totally get that level of frustration. So, you know, you've got all these different pieces kind of coming in. And so then how do you teach, how do you train your staff? How do you train yourself, honestly, to manage and, and love and deal with folks who are all coming with an intense level of stress when they come in, you know, you could equate it back back maybe to the recession, you know, 2008, 2007. Um, You know, how do you help your folks understand that how they feel about this situation is probably a larger reflection of something else that's happening to them currently and has nothing to do with you, but yet you happen to be the bullseye on the target when they walked in or the, the last, you know, nail in the coffin on what their tolerance level was going to be for that day. And, um, and it's tough because your people are also looking for fulfillment in their job and they're just getting, they are getting beat up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, all we can do is the best we can do. And, yeah. and most of the time I, I'm finding exactly what you said, that people are just really appreciative that we're there, yeah. that, you know, that we're open to try to help them. And, and, you know, it's as, as different as it is, it's still a sense of normalcy for a lot of people. So we're in a good spot, right? Yes. And you know what, right now, the whole world kind of sucks, but we're all right in there with it. We're in it together, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not a you problem. It's not a me problem. It's an us problem. Mm -hmm. So well, on that note. Well, uh, Jennifer, thank you. know what's really cool. I know that was kind of a lame in the. No, news. it wasn't. No, it, was it wasn't. It, 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 it wasn't a busy news week as far as dentistry goes. Yeah, everything um, diverted to something else. Well, that, right, but who cares? I think that was an awesome discussion, and and thank you for bringing that up. I love it. But it was fun. I, I think we have a rock star guest that we yeah, need we to uh, introduce. So, Chad, why don't you do the honors? Yeah, so let's talk about our guest real quick. Our get our guest tonight is I'm kind of giddy about this because this guy's a, a hero of mine. But uh, Dr. Nate Lawson, he is the director of the Division of Biomaterials at UAB Birmingham School of Dentistry and the pro- program director of Biomaterials Residency Program and the interim director of the Advanced Aesthetic and Restorative Dentistry Residency Program. He is a 2011, a very young gentleman, uh, graduate of UAB, and he obtained his PhD in biomedical engineering in 2012. If you so an, have, an underachiever. Real underachiever, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what has he been yeah. doing with his life? Now, I'm yeah. going to let Nate tell us a little bit more about himself, but I will say this, that if you have ever done an article or watched a lecture or read an article, I promise you the majority of them, you will see Nate's name in the references because this guy is all over the place. Nate, welcome. It is an honor to have you here. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, shit. I, I'm Nate. not seeing him. Hold on, Nate. Nate, did you mute yourself? And I oh. don't see a picture up there yet, Chad. 
Hold on, he's coming back. He's coming back. It's you a didn't lot see it. Captain Obvious. Can you see him now? <laughs> we're gonna no, we can't, but we're gonna sing some air supply. I'm here until he comes. Oh, there he is. Okay. There he is. Can you see him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Brady Bunch. From Air Supply. It is. It is the Brady Bunch. So, Nate, you can see us. You can hear us. I can see you. I can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Chad, I wanted to tell you. Uh, um, there was this when I. I'm from Chicago. That's why I, ha I don't have. I'm from. You know, I live in Alabama. That and they call this my Yankee accent because I don't. I don't talk like I'm from Alabama. But when I used to live up in Chicago, I had this favorite a stand-up comedian I used to go to, and he always used to say that his favorite sport was ping pong because it's the only sport that's an onomatopoeia. Is it's it's named by an onomatopoeia because an onomatopoeia is like a word that sounds like the sound of it's. It's the sound that the word makes, yes. and he's and he's had all this jokes. About, he turned all these other sports names into onomatopoeia. Like he called swimming like splish splashy, and like it was this good <laughs> bit. About, so I can't yeah. think about that when you're talking about onomatopoeias. And now yeah. you just so, find so basically in a really nice and intellectual way, you're telling me that I completely misused that word, but that's okay. Well, a little bit. Our, but, our uh, viewers uh, are used to it. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to say it, to be honest with you, because it has a lot of. But Nate, well, man, it made it feel better. I, I did Google it while you guys were talking to make sure that I didn't that I that it was the right you know uh, you know so I could say that confidently. If I hadn't Googled it, I would have said it a lot more timidly. <laughs> so, um, Nate, it was great having you on the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, come back again and see us sometime. Yeah, we'll have you back in a few months. When you don't correct the host, all right? <laughs> so no, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't. I just wanted. Wait, to look! To I'm in the big the chair. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally kidding. And and you know what? I deserve all of that. But dude, you're fantastic, and that's exactly why you're here. So, you know, Nate, it's a real honor to have you here. But I told you there were a couple questions that I wasn't going to share with you. But the first question is, okay. I would really like to know about your journey in dentistry because it's certainly interesting. So could you briefly tell us about how you landed where you are? But don't yeah. mention, don't name drop yet because I have a question for you after this. Okay. So yeah, my, um, so actually my path to dentistry was like set from when I was a small child. I have a lot of family in dentistry. So I have an uh, an aunt that's a pediatric dentist, an uncle that's an endodontist, and another aunt that's a general dentist. And so, I mean, from a little kid, I thought I thought I was going to be a dentist. So, I went to college with the intention of being a dentist. Uh, I did engineering as an undergrad, so that I didn't have to take a foreign language. And then, I don't know if I, if, I mean, the next step is my name drop because that's the next person that kind of got me into where I I, I went next, which. So I met this person I don't know, uh, at, when I was in college who I did research with, and he was the guy that uh, got me to Alabama because we were in, I went to college in New Orleans, and after Katrina, he went to UAB, to Alabama, a place I had never been before in my life. And uh, so he had invited me up there for a summer after I graduated college before I was going to start. I was actually going to go to Penn for dental school to the north, back, you know, to my people or whatever. And... Um, like he said, well, come this summer, do some research. Yeah, our people, uh, the tribe uh, people. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so then I went to Alabama where, where there are not a lot of uh, my people, I guess. Uh, and I did a research project with them over a summer. And uh, there was this DMD PhD program going on at Alabama where you get your DMD and your PhD. And it was a really good deal because they paid for your dental school, which was awesome. And that was six years and I did that program and then I graduated. I had kind of like this quarter life crisis where I actually started a PROS residency. I quit that. I worked for a DSO for about a year in Chicago. And then I got a call from this mystery person again and I uh, yeah. called to come back to UAB uh, to work and teach. And I thought, oh, this is a gig I'll do for a couple of years because I knew the money is not good in academics, but uh, let's give it a try. And I just kind of fell in love with it. Like, uh, I mean, like when you guys are talking about things that make you happy, like good moments in dentistry, like mine today was like getting to work with, I was working with these two students and like we had a lecture in the morning and then we were in the research lab in the afternoon and I was showing them some things that we learned in the morning and we got to apply them in the lab and I just saw their lights go on and be like, oh my gosh, like this is real. Like this isn't just a, a lecture. Cool like, 
you can actually apply this stuff. And I just felt like a rock. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like that was like, like that does it for me. So, um, so like that, those teaching moments, like I just fell in love with this job and I learned to forget about how much money I'm making. And like, uh, so yeah, that's kind of, that's been my story as to how I've, so it's been seven years now. Um, so I'm 30, that's the other, I thought you were going to ask me what my birth date was. So that was my secret question. So I'm 30, I'm 36, I was born in 1984. That's a, one of the most common questions people always want to ask me is how old are you? But so I've been doing this job for seven years and yeah, and I love it. That's the year well, I graduated high school. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nate, yeah. um, I, 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 I'm glad you led up to this, but you know, um, we, it's funny. I totally forgot you went to Tulane. I'm originally originally from New Orleans. I think we talked oh, about this yeah. in, in yeah. Phoenix. And my grandfather went to Tulane, and it's just super cool. But lots of lots of stories there. But um, who is your your mentor in dentistry? Because I think that might be the secret person. And I, and I want to see if if I'm on target. Are Are we gonna let this out so soon? This has been like a game show. I've like it's yeah. been like unsolved mysteries. Like this has been fun. No, no, I was. That was so, the buzzer, uh, so, man. Yeah, so the guy that brought me to. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the guy that brought me to Alabama was was John Burgess. Yeah, UT San Antonio grad, right? Yeah, because that was yeah. So he was UT San, UT San Antonio, and then he was uh, LSU where we met, and then after Katrina, he went to UAB uh, to take over biomaterials there, and then he's the guy that brought me back to UAB. Kind of, he dragged me there the first time. And then he dragged me there the second time. And then I met my wife in Birmingham and she's the one that's pulling me here. Never going to let me leave Alabama. So, well, you yeah. know, Nate, I I'll tell you, you couldn't have a better mentor. When I was in dental school in San Antonio, everything referenced in biomaterials was like, well, there was this guy that was here, Dr. John Burgess. There was this guy, Dr. John Burgess, <laughs> Dr. John Burgess. And then it was like, well, he left us for LSU, but now he's at UAB. And, and you know, you, I think when I was in school, he was still at LSU because I'm dating myself now. But then, then he went to UAB, and then a couple years ago, I finally got to spend some time with John up in Wanawak. And John is one of the coolest people I've ever met. He's a very laid back guy, and you have just an incredible mentor. And uh, you know, I, I I'm sure he's really molded you. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, that and that's definitely been. I was even thinking about that a little bit today because there's just these, you know, when you hang around the guy, you just absorb this information, and you know, you don't totally appreciate it until you go back and think of these things that you know, and you're like, yeah, maybe somebody you would have to read a bunch of articles to get that, but you just hang out with the guy for an hours and journal clubs and discussions and working on projects blah 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 and it just like seeps into your blood and then you just there's these things that I take for granted like oh yeah I guess because yeah, when you you, you re appreciate it when you teach the students you know it's like oh well, yeah that's right you don't know that yet because you know I, this has just been part of my every day for mm -hmm. I've been working with him since like oh uh oh four so it's been a long time so just like it just, yeah. So, I mean, that's, and I think another neat thing about his mentor, he's got a different mentorship style than, than uh, maybe everybody has. He's a very much kind of like, you know, he gives you uh, a lot of room. Like, he gives you a lot of trust. So it'd be like, here's a little project, go down the lab, kind of figure it out. I don't hold your hand, you know, don't micromanage you. Uh, it's kind of sink or swim. And like, for me, that was really good when i mentor people i had this tendency to want to hold their hand every little step micromanage oh you didn't do that right uh i want to see every single step and i'm learning that sometimes that doesn't always work so well uh i mean one is exhausting for me but then two it's like i don't get to i just had to learn how to trust some of the the students and the mm -hmm. residents that we have and uh and you know i got that that was that was his form of mentorship and another form of mentorship another thing that he did as a mentor that i think was kind of unique was not only did he sit there and say stuff like oh what are the components of a glass on or he'd also say things like as an academic our job and kind of like a job of a dentist it's not just drilling on the teeth there's a lot of the business aspects an academic you've got a lot of parts of your job that aren't just didactic courses they're kind of like administrative tasks and you say hey i had to have this conversation with somebody that works in our department is the is the division chairman and it was a difficult conversation and this is how i approached it and to me those were so those were some really great lessons because you know my dad would didn't have conversations with me like that and like you know when he did that kind of those kind of conversations i was like oh 
I would, you know, now that I have to make those kind of conversations with people, it just to have his insight, that was a, a big part of his mentorship, you know, even totally unrelated to, to uh, dental materials. Uh, so. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. And you're, you're upholding his legacy very well. And, and I'm going to save one of my comments for the end of the show, but I want to say this, um, you know, John is, is great. And, and what you're doing is, is fantastic, but you know, we were thinking about what types of topics that we want to talk about. And last week I was on a round table and to me, this is one of the hottest topics in dentistry, but would you agree that bioactivity is probably one of the high, hottest topics in dentistry right now? Yeah, I think that it has been kind of hot for a little while. I mean, it's been hot for a couple of Five, years. Five, six years. Yeah. And there's, and it's kind of even making its rounds as to like, you know, I think when it, I mean, if we want to just start getting into it, like some of the original claims of bioactivity have even kind of morphed into some of the newer uh, claims of bioactivity, like uh, the original stuff that was coming out was from all Jeffries. Of, yeah, from like Steve Jeffries. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with materials like ceramide. <laughs> oh. It was, it had, well, I guess if I get into my definition of it is like there's three kinds of materials that can be bioactive, like a liner, a restorative, and a cement. And, you know, each, depending on what kind of material it is, it depends what properties you want. So like, you know, a liner is going to release some kind of calcium. So it can release growth factors so you can get that dental bridge, that healing for doing a direct pulp cap. And then, you know, if you're talking about a restorative, a lot of times, originally they were just talking about releasing calcium or fluoride or ions to help prevent demineralization around the margins of our restorations to help prevent secondary caries. Uh, and then when they talked about cements, it was that ion release. But then additionally, like you said, the Jeffries study with Ceramir, where they're showing that some of that cement could attract some precipitates to, to come like live on the cement. Like, so if you cemented the crown, you had a big old cement gap like between your crown and the tooth that the cement could attract some precipitate some crap on to like leach onto it so that it closes that cement gap so those were i feel like those were that that was like kind of the original body of like the bioactive type of materials and now there's some even like newer concepts coming out um like some of these antibacterial um restorative materials well yeah and, and you're, you're you know jeffrey's definition the buzzword was hydroxyapatite in mm -hmm. my opinion and and you know it, that never satisfied me and so oh. when i when i originally started mentioning you know bioactivity in my lectures i was that that definition never really satisfied me and it's great when you're talking about what ceramir was originally used for which was bone glue and and healing yeah. of fractures but your definition where it, it has a biological effect on the surrounding tissues, to me, is, is that really kind of hit home. And so yeah. from your definition, I take bioactivity and I go from bioactivity to quote unquote biofriendly. And that's what I okay. like to call it. And I think okay. that your definition is, is really all inclusive. And from your definition, I mean, manufacturers love you because your definition, they're like, Hey, we're bioactive now, you know, but it's true. Yeah. What you defined really brings a lot of things into it. So um, with that being said, do you feel that dentists should be utilizing bioactive materials in their practices? I mean, definitely. I mean, of course, for liners, it makes sense that you, I mean, we've always had bioactivity in our, um, in our line. I mean, our liners, like, uh, uh, calcium hydroxide maybe being some of the original stuff and now I think a lot of people are seeing that the calcium silicates like MTA are maybe more effective uh, bioactive liners but as far as restoratives um, yeah I think that uh, it, particularly for high carriers patients I think that the bi bioactivity makes a lot of uh, sense uh, and, and but one of the materials I think that's really they're one of the original but still great performing bioactives in my mind is glass onomers and rmgi materials because they release a ton of fluoride and when we do we have our little we made a bioactivity test in our lab to test the amount of demineralization around uh these uh re restorations we put in extracted teeth and the bio and the bioactivity of the rmgi is just like kill it like they're still just an awesome 
uh, material preventing demon around margins of restorations. I mean, they have their limitations because they're not as pretty and they're not as easy to use and they're not as strong as composites. But like, I think that, you know, for my high care risk patients and the, those class five lesions or inter, and interim restorations and stuff, like I still think RMGI is the, like the way to go. But I, yeah, the one, I, the thing I think about is like, well, what about the patient that's kind of like on the edge and like, it's like, yeah, you don't, I don't think I totally need to put them in interim restorations. Uh, should I use a composite that has maybe, you know, maybe not as much bioactivity as a RMGI, but it has maybe a little bit more than a composite to kind of like uh, just take it, take advantage of maybe a little bit of bioactivity. And yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like as long as the composite has properties that are similar to a regular composite and it's got maybe a little bit of ion release, then, you know, why not? That that's my that has been kind of my take on it. What do you, I don't know how how the rest of you guys feel about that. I, I'm with you 100. percent I think that you know it's kind of like a a, a composite plus plus. You know you've got uh -huh. you've got a, a restoration, and what I've seen is the aesthetics is are really kind of gearing towards what a quote unquote composite looks like, and you've got these mm -hmm. plus plus properties. So why not? But what are you seeing as far as acid neutralization? Are you seeing in, in your studies uh, with glass ionomers and with some of the other products? Like, let's just throw out there. I mean, Shofu has no skin in this game, but the Gymer. Are you seeing acid neutralization as a as a key benefit of these these products? So for one, for some reason that the the beauty fill uh, gymer is like one material we just never really got our hands on to play with. So like when we did our most recent bioactivity test with restoratives, we included um, Sentinan, which is a material from Ivoclar, Activa restorative, um, uh, and then Arm Fuji two, which is just the RMGI, and then we just had a control composite. And we saw is we saw the most prevention of demon with the RMGI, and then the the Sentinel and the Activa were not as much prevention as the RMGI, but more prevention than a composite. So like, okay. uh, you know, our, the little test we do is like, uh, we again, we just have extracted tooth, we put a restoration in there, we, we put in acid solutions, and then we section through the tooth to look at the margins around the restoration, and we see if there's demon there. And the glass ionomers protect the margins. The composites is actually worse at the margins. And with the uh, bioactives per se, it's kind of like, it's not as protected as with an RMGI, but it's not it's not worse like it is with a composite. And so I'd imagine the Geimer, you know, cause it, I know it does definitely does release some fluoride, uh, not as much, not nearly as much as an RMGI or, or GI. Uh, so I, I'd imagine to have some protection um, of the margins. Yeah, so, I'd, I'd love yeah. to see some studies on that. And, you know, I think that's just, uh, I, it's just such a hot topic in dentistry. I mean, it's been going on for the past five, six years. Every company's racing. I mean, it, and, it, and what amazes me is that the topic, Jeff, Jennifer, have you all seen it? I mean, Jeff and I have been on, on several of the KOL meetings together. The topic's not dying down. I mean, mm -hmm. bioactivity is here to stay for a while at least. And so there's, I, there's no there's no question, Chad, and and I think that you know the the biggest argument that we hear is that how do you get how do you get that ion exchange through a resin matrix? That's always the argument. That Great you question. I, I'd be curious to hear what what your perspective is on it because I can tell you that anecdotally, having used um, a lot of, of composite materials with, with pre-reacted glass particles like Shofu and, and having used the Activa product that we've absolutely seen an improvement in the recurrent decay levels. But it'd be really nice to hear your perspective on, on that argument because yeah. it's always a question that comes up. How do you get ionic exchange through a resin matrix? Um, yeah, no, the that's a great that's a great point. I mean, and I and when you're talking about the resin matrix, I uh, I think one of the things you, you're probably referring to is also the adhesive layer. So, like, if you use right. Activa with an adhesive, or if you're using one of these materials with an adhesive, and and crazy enough, I was a little bit worried about that too. So, we actually did another study recently where we looked at using Activa with an adhesive 
and without an adhesive. And actually, it performed b better as far as its bioactivity when you used it with an adhesive. Um, like we use this, we use a single, I think we use uh, Scotch Bond. It, it also like behaves single. better as far as staying in the tooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They did a big clinical trial, right? And they, and they found that, that uh, it doesn't, not, not working so good without uh, uh, an adhesive. Um, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, and, and then there's also other strategies. Like we did a, we actually just did a study for a company called uh, Vista, which I think uh, bought yeah. out. Do you use uh, Regen? Company. Yeah. Regen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. So we, uh, they, they, we did a couple different groups with them and we looked at, they, they have an adhesive that's got bioactive glass in it. And then the composite's got bioactive glass in it. And yeah, we, we did the group, you know, with the bioactive composite, with the bioactive adhesive, and then with the two together. And definitely the best group with that is with the bioactive, uh, adhesive with the bioactive uh, composite combined. Again, I mean, nothing is still, nothing is going to touch the RMGIs as far as the protective effect. But, but again, I mean, the RMGIs, I mean, they just, they don't handle, they don't look, right. they don't, um, they don't last. So it, we're get. I mean, I think that, um, yeah, the, it, I mean, it, it looked pretty, I mean, it looked pretty good with the, uh, with the region. That was a pretty big, we had, the reason we had all these studies, we had this um, Taiwanese in the man lived a lot. I mean, I, I, I'm not joking. I cried actual, you know, wet tears when he left us over. He graduated in May because he did so many. These projects are so hard to do. This bioactive test. I mean, they they're so technique sensitive. And like, I don't know who's going to do them for us now. When we uh, we have got another, we've got some good people in our lab now. But uh, he was really good at doing these tests, and he did a bunch of them before he left. So uh, yeah, he did the one with with Vista with the Regen. He did the one with uh, Activa with and without adhesive. He also looked at some of the bioactive cements, and he, that one we just got published, uh, like looking at Therasem, Activa cement, uh, Ceramir, and RMGI cement and resin cement. And again, the RMGI cements are still going to be the most bioactive like protective of the margins. Um, and then the bioactives intermediate and the resin's gonna behave the worst. So that one's and actually at least published. Like that. You tested bond strength on all of these too? Yeah, some of them we did. So like the, the bioactive cements, we tested bond strength on those a, way, a long time. At first, cause we didn't know how to do this bioactivity test. So we just used to look at ion release. Cause that's easy to do. You just put yeah. the materials in water and then you get a little probe and you measure ion release. And that was our bioactivity test. And then when we did that, we also looked at retention and yeah, retent. I mean, again, like, um, with the cements, the, if you looked at those cements, I just talked about like the Ceramir and the RMGI are pretty comparable as far as crown retention. The Therasem is a re self adhesive resin cement. So it's got a higher, much higher retention than any of the other, uh, cements. And then, um, Activa is somewhere kind of inter intermediate, I think, because it's 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 kind of, you know, I think of it as like a um, compomer. So I know Larry hates it when I call it a compomer, but um, it's a, you know, it's it's got Larry a lot of retired. Kind of He's okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, so I think that, you know, I just think of the bioactives is, some, is somewhere kind of like in between, you know, they got some of the favorable properties of a composite. So it's not, you know, so some, sometimes I feel like, you know, when I say they're not as bioactive as an RMGI, like, oh, you're dumping on, our, on bioactives. I don't, I feel like it's just different. I mean, because they, they have better mechanical and optical and aesthetic properties than RMGI. So it's like, they have, you know, a place, they're just somewhere in between. <laughs> So what about the, uh, when you, when you were talking about adhesives and the adhesive mm -hmm. between like the gymers and the composites and whatnot, how did region fare? I'm just curious. As far did as you, it's, uh, uh, bond strength, it, was it good? Yeah, uh, so mind. we actually, no, no. I mean, we, yeah. it's funny cause we just got two bottles in the mail on Monday to test sheer bond strength of region. So okay. we, we, I was, uh, I'm thinking about that. I was supposed to actually do that this week. And now I'm like, yeah, so we don't, I don't know yet. Well, um, so, I would love to uh, see that when you get it because <laughs> I, I love sure the, the data is good. You're going to see it. Yeah. Well, I'm good. I love the people at Vista Apex <laughs> and, and, uh, and I, I think they, they're, they're really excited about their products and, you know, you work mm -hmm. with some awesome people. I know Michelle from GC is watching tonight and, you know, we, we love GC and, 
you you just have you have so many fans in the dental world it's amazing nate so oh i think so well, I, yeah, I, have to say, I, I was talking with mark nelson from my tarot today and he was like oh my god uh, nate yeah, is, is awesome. the best <laughs> he's yeah. like he's like tell my said hello on the, you know and 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 mark always every week we get uh you know hey guys good luck on the show which is awesome i mean yeah. it's just so, so nice great. But when uh when when I mentioned that you were on the show tonight, he's like, oh my god, he just he just blew up. So yeah, um, you know, you're you're making an incredible name for yourself. Um, so oh. may I ask a clinical question, or is the blonde girl Both the right right right. Right. Yes, please. No, no, no. Be you a girl? Be <laughs> <laughs> So we've been talking about. RMGIs and resin and all this. So let's talk crowns for a second when we talk about cements. Yeah. So if I'm listening mm. to you tonight, I would say, ooh, RMGI all day long. I'm going to spend it. As long as I got the retention, that's what I'm going to use regardless of material. So let's talk about it. What do you think? Versus like a yeah, resin I mean, bonded that, restoration. Yeah, I remember when I first came to back to UAB to start teaching, uh, I, I I graduated dental school. I'd never done a ceramic crown before. And then I practiced in the super crappy um, like practice where we didn't we did these forty dollar PFMs. And yeah. then so I came back to dental school at the same time teaching ceramics. So um, I thought that I had to bond every ceramic crown. So every time that I have to do a crown, I'd get out the little chemistry set and all the dental systems really hated <laughs> me. And then I realized, you know, that you don't have to bond every resin crown. And uh, right. so, yeah, so I always think of like, you know, there's all this, the advantage of RMGI is that RMGI is going to be uh, one, I mean, it's just easier to use. And like, I know I've gone back and forth with people that, that like to use, still use all those ceramic primers with RMGIs. And we've done you know, test in the lab where we've put primers on zirconia or primers on Emacs and used the RMGI and it was essentially worthless. So I say, if you're using RMGI, you don't have to mess with the primers. And then it's, it's just easier and faster cleanup. And then you got that protective effect of the RMGI. And then, you know, the other thing is moisture tolerance. I think a lot of times we think about like rubber dams for composites, but it's like, you know, adhesive, some adhesive bonding of a crown is still adhesive bonding. And so like you have to try to get somewhat decent isolation and that's, a, that's hard to do with mm -hmm. crowns if you, you know, oh, so 100%. I always think yeah. RMGI is a great default and then just bond it if you need the retention. Um, so I'm doing a lot more partial coverage, uh, lithium to silicate crowns now. So those yeah. ones I'm, I'm definitely bonding all day long, but like, like a zirconia full coverage crown, like, yeah, I'm I'd all, all about uh, RMGI. Well, and if you don't want resin down there, why would you want it bonded? You know, like if you're leaning towards a crown anyway, because you want it to be at the gingival margin or oh, even yeah, slightly yeah. sub-G, why would you bond that in? Because you know exactly what's going to happen to that resin once it's in that. Well, in that and, and if you've if you've built a, a preparation with good cohesive properties, absolutely. why would you do that? You're not worried about retention. Why, why subject yourself to, to that risk? Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. Well, you know, I what I would like to do because bioactivity just killed it tonight. I thought that was amazing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buzzword pat my own back. Hashtag up that that topic right there. All right, Chad, but, you did you done you good. Did a good job, Chad. You done what good. I'd like to do is I, I want to get Nate back and I want to talk about bonding and ceramics and zirconia and all that stuff. And I want, I actually want this regen study to be in first before we do that. Uh, I have some ideas there too, but, um, but Nate, you know, I, I do want to say this and you know, you, you had an incredible mentor and my mentor um, that I think of all the time is Chuck Wakefield, whose mentor was John Burgess too. They were really good friends in the army. Have you ever met Chuck or do you know of Chuck Wakefield? I haven't met him no. Okay. Well ask next time you talk to John, ask him if he remembers Chuck yes. Wakefield. And I promise you, he will know Chuck was my AEG director and Chuck is an amazing okay. human being. But you know, the thing is, is that I could only wish that I could live Chuck's legacy at, at, a school or an academia and you are doing John very proud 
And so kudos to you, my friend. And um, thanks, Ted. I, dude, thank you for being on our show. You are a rock star, like Jeff said. You are a stud. I'm honored to call you my friend. And um, I would, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I, I know your website, Book Nate. I want to book Nate again and have Nate back. And, um, and I do too. Yeah, I would oh, love to so. have you. We would all love to have you back. Um, and Nate, tell us about uh, where we could find you on Instagram, Facebook, wherever oh, yeah. if people want to follow you. Yeah, so like two, uh, two of my really good buddies at uh, the dental school, Augusto Robles, who is like, I call him a Mr. Miyagi because he's like the guy uh -huh. that helped me out so much with clinical dentistry. Um, and great. then- and um, a guy named Celine Arce, who's the prosthodontist at our school, and he's, uh, again, he's just another even a clinical mentor uh, uh, of mine. And we have this Instagram channel where I post a lot of nerdy biomaterial stuff, and they help me do some, uh, uh, like, clinical stuff, and it's called Dentinal Tube. My non-dentist friends call it Dentinal Lube. Uh, <laughs> make fun of me. But, like, it's supposed to be, like, YouTube, but Dentinal and Dentinal Tubules combined. That's so. Cute. Yeah, so that's where you can find more of a uh, nerdy dental material stuff. <laughs> All right, well, well, Nate, you know what, I Fred, before you... you jump in real quick, I just have to say this. Ask John Burgess about um, one of the guys who meant so much to me in dental school was, uh, was uh, a dentist by the name of Dan Sneed. Um, and John will absolutely know this name because he was on the ADA Commission for Dental Materials. And when I was a senior in dental school, he would run down into the clinic, hand us new materials, say, just acting so excited. And that's the vibe I get from you. I know you're that guy. But you know what? It's amazing the potential you have to inspire students at that point, you know, just by saying, you know, look, I don't know everything about this material yet. I'm learning it. You know, but here's an opportunity for us to learn and engage the dental student with that. So, um, Dan Sneed, if you're out there, I don't know if you're watching. I don't know if you're a member, but thank you for doing that. And I know, Nate, you're the probably the same kind of educator. So, um, man, thank you for being on. Oh, yeah, thanks, thank man. you. Yeah, thank you. Is... You're, you're coming back, buddy. So we'll, we'll be in touch to talk about yeah. dates. But thanks, Nate. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been fun. Thank you. Hey, 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 you're awesome. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, night. night, buddy. Night. Um, yes. Chad, we, we, we got a lot to get to, and we are one minute before we're supposed to go off. So I want to get a couple of things out there. Next week, dental education in the age of COVID. We've got UOP educator and catapult educator, Dr. Farood Hakim, one of our good buddies um, from, from catapult, um, as well as a dental student. We have Cole Herzig, who is a dental student. And so we're going to talk about how things have changed so much in this age of COVID as far as dental education goes. The other thing that I want to mention is that we are so thankful to all of you out there for helping us grow. And um, we actually want to do something really cool here. Um, Blue Marble Cocktails has partnered with us to help bring some really cool T-shirts and golf shirts um, for the Dinks community. What we would like to do is challenge you all to bring two new members to our Dinks group. Anyone who brings two new members to the Dinks group is going to get a t-shirt. Um, hopefully, I'll have a prototype to show you next week. Anybody who brings five members or more is going to get a sweet golf shirt. So um, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about our growth. I'm excited about what we're doing for dentistry. And I just want to thank you two for, uh, for you know, being on this journey with, with me. Namaste. Thanks for having us here. Mm. Jeff, that was definitely an onomatopoeia. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we can only use simple terms. Yeah. Basically. Oh, yeah. So... 
That was Adios, a plethora of big words. You said at a third grade level. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Let's close it out and just say that was an awesome show. And, Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, cheers to everybody out there. Now I know if I say RMGI, your the, the hair on the back of your neck is just going to stick right. Yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I think you had a little bit of a man crush there. No, I know. I know. I'm not really sure attention. what RMGI means. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you might have to help me out on that one a little bit, but I'm. I mean, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree. Yeah. yeah. You think maybe oh, that was your man crush? Okay. Is that your jam? That's my jam. All right. No, no problem with it. Peace out. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Love y'all.